Carlos Hyde, first and foremost, a player in this offense who saw in the second half what reaping the benefits of what Baker Mayfield was bringing to the table. Obviously, 23 carries for 96 yards uh, and two touchdowns. Uh, he had a catch with Tyrod, and then he had a catch with uh, with Baker, I believe. How many runs did he have in the first half? I believe it was six. Right. And none of those, there was like three series before they even gave him the ball. They started on the six on one of those series. He busted off a 22-yard run, followed by a five- and a three-yard run. Then on third down, they decided to pass it again, and they got sacked for the loss of six yards. So Baker comes in, and all of a sudden, this game plan switches up a little bit. They're they're down, and they're they're running the ball for the second half. But And Carlos has looked great. This offensive – shout-out to the offensive line yeah. has been – is, well, is really even, good, and they should be leaning on this offensive line. Well, even the first couple of games, Carlos has been good. You know, right. it just hasn't been like great like he was right. last week. And so, and and you know, and that's the thing that you know Tyrod Taylor's given us, and and you know, take nothing away from Shady McCoy, but in game one, Carlos had twenty two carries. It just only went for sixty yards and a touch. In game two, he had sixteen carries against New Orleans, and so that game one's against Pittsburgh. A couple which more he, catches in that game. Twenty two carries where he they got five quarters of football with the tie mm-hmm. in the overtime. And in New Orleans, he gets 16 carries for 40 yards and a touchdown. And so neither one Jets, I mean, Steelers nor Saints have, you know, been knocking down anybody defensively this year. And then so they play a better defense, you know, through two weeks anyway in the Jets. Second half, Baker Mayfield comes in there, the whole thing opens up, which is kind of, I mean, obviously it's fantastic for everybody involved offensively, but you you would the way Tyrod Taylor and and the mobile quarterback and the you would think back, it's a little counterintuitive. Yeah, you would think it necessarily wouldn't jump up like that, but it did. And maybe we kind of touched on it so before. Get back people up a little bit. Maybe every, now they're worried about a pass. Back them up. They're worried about a pass. The offensive line's excited because they're getting first down. You right. know, again, I'm not going to knock Tyrod, but just the difference it did between seem like the again back to the, the whole. Point. It did uh, seem like the offensive line was blocking a little better. Right. Everybody, Baker Mayfield the, was out there. Well, right. the offensive line was blocking better. The, the wide receivers were running crisper routes. They were catching anything <laughs> sure. to come close to them. You know, it's just like the whole shot in the arm that happened when Baker came in there. And Carlos was one of those guys. Of course, ba- birthday boy. Had a kid same night, you know, all that was good destined stuff. Destined to have a Just great game. Destined to have a great game. Right. And he came through for us. And so going forward, uh, you know, Carlos Hyde looks like an RB1 to me. Sure. And so he, you he, got a good offensive line and you got one of the best defenses actually in the NFL. So you're going to stay in games. Right. It's a great it's point. Maybe that, unless, unless, you know, Baker gives you a couple of pick sixes in the first quarter and you which, go down. I'm sure there'll be some growing pains. Yeah, sure. But he right. Fumbled, not, he could have had a fumble lost and an interception in that game. It's yeah. not going to be, you know, Sam Darnold was, we crowned, he was crowned and then this last game, they say this is one of the most. Confu- they took his hardest, jacket back. This is, yeah, they did. They, they, said give me that gold jacket back. yeah <laughs> this is one of the harder defenses to to play against especially on a cool like they they and it was a short week right. thursday night on the road they confused drew Brees in drew Brees's dome right and then they you know everyone kind of said McC- or not mccown uh darnold was going to struggle in this game and he did he did um so the question for me is is hyde was kind of one of those guys that was uh drafted i'm not going to say no man's land in the draft but he was sort he, of. He fell down a little bit, and he was tumbling about. He was down a little bit in the middle of the season, and then towards the uh, beginning of closer to the start of the regular season, he started to climb back up draft boards a well, little bit. Well, as soon as you saw him running in preseason, he was well, sure. Up. But I mean, before that, I'm, we're talking like July or something like maybe fifth, sixth round pick here. Well, it was it. He was bouncing like a ping pong ball because you know it was went from Niners and then he, he went to the Browns, went from the Niners to the Browns, Chubb. and then they were like, oh, we're going to draft Saquon. So now everybody's out on out on Carlos Hyde, and then they don't draft Saquon for one twenty four hour period. Seemed like a lifetime for Nick for. Carlos Hyde, and then they take right. Nick Chubb, and they sign Duke so to he, a longer he, deal, and then they signed. So yeah, just a crazy, crazy off season for Carlos Hyde stock. Fantasy stock was just all over the place this year. So he was a guy that you kind of drafted, and he's rewarding you right now for drafting him. A lot of people probably said, "No way, I don't want anything to do with Carlos Hyde. He's a little bit older. We don't know what the hell is going to go on. Injury history." Um, but he's he's paying you dividends. Big Co likes him as an RB one. I'm a big was always been a big Carlos believer. I believe he is a top ten running back in this league right now. He's sitting at number nine in overall points in this particular league. Um, he's had he's averaging sixteen points a game. He's had thirteen, twelve, and then twenty four. Obviously bolstering that. Average, average up a little yeah. bit but you would think that there's more 
15 to 16 plus games coming than the 12 point a right. game uh, on the way. So he's a guy that maybe you're not, if you drafted him last year in the startup, you're not super invested in. Like you're not, you didn't have to pay a ton for him. He was kind of like, yeah, he, he stayed around basically long enough for you to say, eh, I could roll the dice on Carlos Hyde here. Sure. Maybe he'll pay dividends. What do you do with him right now? Like, let's say you're zero and three for you know. Let's just use that as an example. Or I guess you could really have any record per yeah. se. But are you are you looking to get rid of Carlos Hyde? Do you trust Carlos Hyde for the rest of the year? And then moving forward next year, he's obviously probably not going to be a Brown. He has an out of this contract, and then he's a free agent. Uh, moving into his 28, 29 year old season. He's 27 right now. Like ju- right. just had his birthday. Right. So just turned 27. So he'll be 28 moving into the next season. So I believe that there's a solid two good years of Carlos Hyde left, ev- as long as he stays healthy. He just turned 27? Yep. Wow. I thought he just turned 28. I know, right? Not roll back the clock, Carlos Hyde. Right. right. So I I believe in him. You're part of your. I believe in him for the rest of the year. Sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. And then you, you know. How many times? Have, how many? How long does it take for us to respect what Carlos Hyde can do? Like, don't give me any more. Oh well, this happened. I still don't think he's respected. It, it he does. He, I'm he, looking for pictures to put on his YouTube video, and like, there's none even of them of the Browns. <laughs> yeah, like they won't even take a damn picture of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, I believe in him he's, for he's the rest of the season. Long. And honestly, man, I like. Let's say the let's say the Browns win some games this year, and yeah, they have an out in his contract, but he's still cheap, relatively cheap. So what what's to say you can't in, even play the, with the Browns? In the realm next year? of running backs, he's actually one of the higher. But I'm yeah, but in of running backs, but still you got you got one of the biggest salary, but you got plenty of salary cap for the Browns. I think, I think you just drafted a guy. He's looked good in spot duty. I think I don't think I really don't think there's any way that he ends up with the Browns. I don't. I'm I'm, so I'm going to disagree with you there and say there's no, I, I I don't have any percentages or ratios. Have, I'm just not going to buy into. Well, he's got out in his contract. I got twenty five. So I got twenty five that he's not a Brown next year. Let's do it. Already they, owe you ten. They'd have to pay him five point nine million. Oh, you five OJ Wayne ten for a bet on by the. <laughs> Something we'll talk about later. They uh, they had they owe him five point nine as the cap hit if they keep him. It'd be two point three million in dead cap money to cut him. So maybe that's enough of incentive to not cut him. But uh, I, well, all right. So this pay him double year, that next year. If he's him. next year if he's not a Brown, he's on a team that would have just signed him and that wants him. You know, obviously, right. you know, and the Browns wanted him this year. Is basically right, that's kind of where I'm heading. You, you gotta know, you gotta. 28 year old player 27 who's, right who's now right. as of last week but uh, moving towards next season he'd basically and, be 28 so and if he stays healthy he looks like he, he was a rb1 last year if he stays healthy this year with what's going on in the browns and that offensive line and baker opening things up and you just saw him get 102 touches like there's no reason that would with the lack of running backs past five or six of them in the league that are actually scoring points right now there's no reason he can't stay healthy and be an rb1 this year i'm not saying he's going to be a top five but there's no reason he can't be 10 to 15 if he stayed healthy, he's usually a top twelve yeah, player. Preci- my point exactly. So I, I've if, been if you're preaching this forever, yeah. So, so I mean, what do you pay for a Carlos Hyde if somebody is looking to get rid of him? I'm fine with having Carlos for the next two or three years on my team. I, I have him on teams, and I'm I'm hanging on. I'm not right. trading him. Yeah, I think I think even if you are zero and three, for me, three weeks into the season is too soon for me to call it a wrap on that season. I've I've seen too many weird things happen in fantasy football, so I'm like, if I have Carlos Hyde and I'm zero and three, I don't I'm not like trying to ship him off because he's an older running back and my team's not heading in the right direction. Like I've been four and zero to start the season before and miss the playoffs, so sure. anything can happen. I'm not ready to call a ball just yet, and if I have Carlos Hyde, I'm holding on for dear life and I'm just riding this train out. Well, there's different zero and threes. I mean, if you're an zero and three team and you don't and your team is just that type, you can see that you're 100, 100 points less than the next guy and when it comes to points scored there's diff- you might have yeah. you might have Alshon Jeffrey and Le'Veon Bell on the bench and Doug Baldwin that's an 0 and 3 team that's a lot better than another 0 and th- there's right. different 0 and 3 teams so I'm not going to fault you if you're a, a team you could be 1 and 2 0 and 3 whatever and you could be like all right I can get if and I there's not let's just call it a 12 man league there's not necessarily a guaranteed Carlos Hyde lover, truther like Casey is in every 12 men league. But if there's a Casey Myers, I call it respecter. I hate yeah. truther. All right. If you if there's a full <laughs> hunt all the way, just respect the hell out of a guy and for in your league that respects Carlos Hyde pr- before this season, during this season, and after this season, and you can get a 
a you know a haul for him. I can't blame you for trading him, but this is this is you know right. This so is this this production's here to stay. And if you you know, so there's no reason to trade him unless you're getting something very 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 solid for him. Right. Like, so so back to qu- Casey's question, which I didn't even I didn't answer it either here. So he said, "What would you give up to get him?" And that would similarly go with. What would you be accepting to trade? Him? Let's you put know it this I mean? way: like, I wouldn't. Tra- I wouldn't take a first round pick from a guy who's got a studded out team. That's obviously, and I, I, I will say that I take a lot of. I'm gonna take a lot of stock out of saying, "Oh well, you've got a bad team, so you're gonna have an early first rounder. You got a good team, so you're gonna have a late first rounder." Because right now, Casey and I have the best team in the league, and we're zero and three, and we have no first round pick. So that sucks if it continues like that because we got a full starting lineup on the bench hurt, but. If you, I wouldn't take a first round pick from a team that I'm pretty sure is going to be in the top two or three when it comes to championship chase. I wouldn't want a late, I wouldn't want 110, 111, 112 next year for Carlos Hyde because he's better than that. But you would give that up to get him. Yes. I would I mean, give up a first. To if get you're hunting Carlos. right now and, and you're starving for some RB production, I don't think, think there's anything wrong with throwing Well, let's a, put it this way. Last year in one FFPC league, I gave away my first round pick. Going head into right the day of the trade deadline, actually like eleven fifty eight p.m. or ten nine fifty eight, whatever. If it was ten p.m., twelve p.m., whatever, like twelve a.m., I gave away my first next year for Carlos Hyde going into the playoffs just for running back depth, and he was crushing it. And go even this year, like I didn't I didn't have that first round pick in the dra- in the draft, and I had Carlos Hyde, and I'm happy about it. You know, right. like I not only did I use him last year in the playoffs, I got unlucky and didn't win anyway. But right, and what would you have done with that first round pick? Maybe you could have got carry on, but maybe you ended up with Rojo. You know, it was still too late. I I missed ca- that spot. Didn't get carry on Johnson by one pick, so it didn't matter anyway. Right. Um. But maybe, maybe you would have got Nick Chubb. Maybe right. you would have got DJ Moore. Maybe you would have got you know just a, a yeah, bunch. Maybe of guys. I would have got Rashad Penny. Maybe right. I would have got Rojo, who's not even right. being played. Yeah. Half that first round is unstartable at this point. And that's time. more than that. Most right. of that first round Most is unstartable. And it's like Saquon and, and Calvin and, if, and Carrion. If you look back, other than the 2014 wide receivers and last year's running backs, that's the way the rookie drafts goes. Right. More often than not, there's one or two good players, and you don't know who they are for three years. Right. And so. The running backs last year, last year's running back rookie class spoiled us. And then you obviously had Zeke at 101 and Melvin Gordon and you had Gurley a couple years ago. So there was players. There's always players. But yeah, but you don't know. Most of the time, Gurley was 1-1, Zeke was 1-1. So you knew and then you knew what was happening. Then it was Saquon this year. But overall, you don't really know. So yes, I would give, if I'm legitimately contending, I would give up my late first round pick. You don't really know. Carlos Hyde. You don't really know who. So you're saying like if it, if obviously you don't know what pick's going to be what at this point, but like a one five per se right now for Carlos Hyde. If I if I think that's sure. If I think I if I think I'm chasing the championship, not if I'm floundering around and I may or may not make the playoffs. Right. Because that's the difference. Well, right now I got a I got a pretty I got a I think I have a good team in this league, but David Johnson's killing me. Yep. right now yep. not killing me like t- he's killing me because he's not scoring uh two players worth of points yeah um and i got carlos hyde who's holding me down in that second running back spot and like i don't i don't want to sell carlos hyde. exactly like i'm just oh, i'm just hoping that i got good receivers i got Devonte adams and mike evans and uh marvin jones and doug baldwin's hurt right now and just and then a bunch of secondary pretty good receivers that most people want on their teams uh, my running backs are hurting a little bit and i could i'm one and two i could very well try to unload a carlos and just be building for next year but i'm hanging on to all my carlos stock because it's you know even if you are struggling a little bit it's the way dynasty goes just like big co said like you have a, a team that maybe isn't doing that great right now but it's probably it, it, it could be a good team you're just not catching any breaks or you got some injuries and you got a, a a roster full of starters on your bench right now because you can't play them. Right. Um, so sometimes it's not just because it's not going great one year. Next year it could be you could be like, oh, where'd this team come from? They're kicking everybody's ass. Like, so don't get uh, too upset when you seem like oh, I thought I had a good team and it's not going that great this year. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, so like, babe, would you give? Would you trade away Carlos Hyde for Kenny Galladay? Somebody who's almost ungettable right. at this point you know like if you if to move for me to move carlos hyde you would have to get an absolute asset you don't move I mean, carlos hyde for Kenny galladay's 25 <laughs> yeah yeah but 25 and wide receiver years is like he's teenager you know so but 
That's but what sure, I'm but saying. No, that's but a, an that's, asset that's a good who's point. ascending. But no, I wouldn't. If because the running, I, I like I can. The running back position is just it's too hard to find. One thing's constant: if Carlos is healthy, he's in that upper echelon of running backs. Yeah, there you so, go. There you go. There you go. The moral of the story with Carlos Hyde is, is the 49ers should have never let this guy go. He should still be the guy over there. Mm. And we're buying, not selling Carlos Hyde. Love Absolutely. It. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be back faster than Troy Aikman can say Baker Mayfield. 